Hey guys, Mitch should be here. Uh, bring you a little video on inscribed and central angles and the difference between them and some of the properties that we need to know. Uh, so first thing, this guy here I'm going to make right now is an inscribed angle. So the most important thing about an inscribed angle is that its vertex is on the circle. So its vertex is right there. So if I call this guy A, V, and C, V, the middle letter, so angle A, so the middle letter is on the circle. And if you notice, down here, the angle is subtended by arc AC. All right, or the arc subtends the angle. So you see it comes from this arc. If you look at this central angle now, central angle is really easy to remember because the thing about a central angle is that it form its vertex is in the center. So usually, you would label the center of a circle uh, O. So usually it has some type of A, O, B, or something like that. So the center of the circle is A, or the central angle is A, O, B, and it has arc, in this case it's a minor arc, A, B. All right? And the thing about a central angle, let's just call this for the sake of argument, my, my, the measure of my arc AB here is 100 degrees, and recognize the difference between a measure of an arc and an arc length. The measure of an arc is how many degrees around a circle, an arc length is the distance around a circle. So the measure of my arc is 100 degrees. So that's equal to my central angle. So my central angle is equal to the measure of my arc. Now, the inscribed angle property simply states that if we have two inscribed angles, let me draw them. One here like this. One over here like this. Sort of like the bow tie. And let's just call this one 30. My central angle property cost, so let's call this A, B, C, and D. So my central angle property says, or sorry, inscribed angle property says that if A, B, C, A, B, D, and A, C, D are, in, are subtended by the same arc, which they are, they both come from A and end at D. Then my two central angles or my two inscribed angles are equal. So A B D is equal to A C D. So inscribed angles coming from the same arc or subtended by the same arc are equal. So you always look for those by sort of drawing these arcs. They start from the same letter and end at the same letter. So A start at A, go to a different letter, then come to another one. So inscribed angles that are subtended by the same arc are equal. Let's look at the central angle property now, or inscribed central angle property. Let me just draw an inscribed angle. Here's my inscribed angle. Here's my, I'm just going to have a guess where the center of the circle is. Call that my central angle. Let's label it. So call that O. A, O, B. Let's see up here. So my central angle property tells me that if my central angle is 100, an inscribed angle that's coming from the exact same arc, so my arc down here, has to be half. So if that's 100, and this is 50. It's a really important property. So if my central angle is 100, and I have an inscribed angle coming from that same arc, or subtended by the same arc, then it's 50. So 100 and then 50. Uh, my semicircle property is actually just a special case of the inscribed central angle property. So if I draw a diameter of this circle, just like this guy, so here's my diameter with the center O. That's actually a angle of 180. So AOB is a straight angle of 180. So angle AOB is a diameter, straight angle, the value is 180. So if I draw a inscribed angle coming from this same arc down here, which is called the semicircle, AB, then guess what I create? I create a 90 degree angle. So this guy up here must be 90 degrees. So call it ABB. So if you, anytime you have a diameter and then an a inscribed angle coming from the diameter, coming from the diameter, you create a 90 degree angle. So that's all the semicircle says. It just creates a, a 
special property of the central inscribed element. So this guy's the diameter is 180, so this guy must be 90. So recognize that the straight line, this diameter, is a central angle. It's a central angle of 180. The inscribed element coming from it is 90 degrees. Alrighty, so last property. So this property is called the cyclic quadrilateral, or the cyclic quadrilateral, whatever you like to call it. Um, so let me make one first. So mine's going to look a little square-like. Let's do a couple different chair here. So, um, so the thing about a cyclic quadrilateral is that all vertices are on the circle. So here, 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 and here. So basically what a cyclic quadrilateral tells us is that angles directly across from each other adds 180. So let's just call this one 80. This, if this guy happened to be 80, then guess what this guy is? It's 100 because it has to add to 180. And let's call this guy 75. That guy's 75. And this guy over here is 105. So angles directly across from each other with a cyclic quadrilateral have to add to 180. The only thing is be really careful that it's a cyclic quadrilateral because sometimes they're going to try and fool you. And let me just give you a case of when they might fool you. So let me draw a circle. Look, that one gives me the center. Um, and they have something drawn like this. So you see, this looks like a, at first it might look, it's definitely a quadrilateral, but it's not a sickly quadrilateral. We can't necessarily say the same thing because this vertice right here is not on the circle. It's in the center of the circle. At the center, we need it on the on the edge of the circle. So be really careful. So a cyclic quadrilateral edges all the corners, the vertices are on the circle, and opposite sides adds 180. So guys, it's really important that you can listen to me do these uh, talk about these terms. You really have to practice them and sort of not be thinking about them consciously when you do them. Just learn to recognize them right away. Um, you can't have. I know it's, sometimes when you study, you have a sheet in front of you. That's okay. But on a test, you're not going to have that sheet. You have to be able to just learn the theorems by practicing them. And then once you have them practiced, they're sort of automatic. You recognize them and you understand the rules right away. So uh, make sure you try all the problems that I gave you in class. So here's a couple of examples. Uh, I'm not going to touch on every every property, but I'm, I'm going to use some of them. So it says, this is right off a of public exam. So it says, in a circle with center O, Angle C is 44, so it's actually A, C, D, A, C, D. Uh, generally, we label, this is from a public exam, so uh, angle A, C, D is equal to 44. Generally, we label an angle three letters. Uh, what is the measure of minor arc A, D? So we're looking for the measure of this minor arc. So you have to be able to recognize the relationship between central angles, the inscribed angles, and things like that. So first thing I always try to do when I'm doing a problem like this is recognize any inscribed or central angles. So find them. What can we tell about them? Um, next, you might want to try and look for the semicircle property if it's possible, if it's there. And another thing I would identify is radiuses. This is a radii. This one actually is kind of important to identify any radiuses. So we'll talk about it in maybe another example or another video, but keep it in mind. So if you look here, A, C, D is a is a, an inscribed angle. And ABD is also an inscribed angle. So if you think about it, our inscribed angle rules tells me if this one's 44, then so is this one, because they're both coming from this blue guy down here. And we also have a central angle here. And we know one thing, that our central angle is going to be equal to the measure of this arc. So if, my, if this is 44, then my central angle down here is going to be 88 which means that this guy is also 88. So 88 is the measure of my arc. Now you could have got that right away just by recognizing that the inscribed angle is exactly half the measure of the arc that it comes from. So if this is 44, that had to be twice as much, so 88. Or you could have did it like I did, found my central angle, and recognized my central angle is equal to the measure of that arc, which is 88. All right, let's try another one. Might be a good idea, guys, if you're doing these, pause them right before I do it, and then do it yourself and check your answer.
Alrighty, so I want you to pause this one now, look at it, try it, and then see what answer you get. Alrighty, so let's see. So if you look at this guy, right away you can tell we have a sickly quadrilateral. So A, D, C, and B are on the circle. But if you look at it a little closely, you also have an inscribed angle here, A, A, B, C. So this angle B is an uh, inscribed angle. And this guy right here happens to be at X, is a central angle. So remember the rule with the sickly quadrilateral. If this guy is 118, then this, so B plus D equals 180. So what that means is I have, whatever I add to this has to make it go to 180. So one easy way you can find out is 180 minus 118. And if you do that, you should get, last time I checked, 62. So this is 62 degrees up here. Now, this is an inscribed angle. So now we have to remember, what do we know about inscribed angles? Well, we know inscribed angles coming from the same arc are equal. Or inscribed and central angles coming from the same arc. The central angle is double the inscribed, or the inscribed is half the central. So if it's double. Double 62 is 124, so x is going to be 124, and that means that that's the answer. Okay, really, really important to recognize these rules. You can see I did that kind of easy because I recognized the rules, but you got to make sure that you're so familiar with them that it's 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 uh, makes it easy. It's no good just to read over the rules; it's not going to work. You have to make sure you practice the problems. All right, this is our last one. This one's beauty. Okay, so let's see. Given the circle shown, what is the measure of y? So you see y is down here. So I got an inscribed angle here, measure 25. And you look, this is the arc it comes from. And if you look, there's another angle that comes from that arc. That's also 25. We might need about, it's pretty, it's, it's, we can put it there anyway. And if you look here, sometimes it's hard to see these, but this is an inscribed angle here, and it comes from uh, BC. And if you look, another angle comes from BC is this one that's 75. So now I have my three angles of my triangle, or two angles of my triangle. We can find the third just by subtracting it from 180, because all angles of a triangle add to 180. So 25 plus 75 is 100. So 100 subtract, or 180 subtract 100. It's going to give me 80 for Y, and that is my answer. I don't think that's there's any more. Oh, there's one more. Perfect. Okay. So on the circle shown in center O, what is the measure of x in degrees? Um, so this one's also a tricky one. You got to be looking for your different types of angles. So look here. I've got a central angle. I think that's straight. And I've got an inscribed angle. Put it here. here, 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 here. So I don't know the value of this guy, but if I did know it. I'd be, I'd be able to say, well, that's a central angle. This is an inscribed that comes from this same arc here. Then, guess what? We must have uh, the central angle double the inscribed, so it must be 2x, or whatever x is going to be. So, um, if this guy is 80, now this is a straight line. Remember what I said about the value of the diameter? The value of a diameter is, 100, is 180 degrees. So, if this is a diameter, 180 degrees, or any straight line for that matter, and I divide it, one part of it, up into 80, then what's the other part? Well, the other part must be 100, right? Because it has to go to, it's still, the value of a straight line is still 180, and the two parts that I broke it up into must go to 180. So that must mean that this guy over here is 100. So if that's 100, then whatever half 100 is my inscribed, so 50. So that's our answer. Good stuff. Um, like I said, guys, really really important just practice this stuff and if there's any questions you want more practice problems by all means ask me for them i got lots uh good luck with your studying and i'll see you in class sorry for this video being so long